confession time. Work had me a little burnt out, which is why I extended my upload schedule. But don't worry, there should be no distractions. Nope, not this time. Not even the feature creep. So, without further ado, it's time for... First order of business, like the defensive minigame, is to move everything that I've built onto the map scene into the battle scene. Starting, of course, with the base for all other minigames. The first attack. I had to modify some skill stuff in order to fit this bad boy in there. And to my surprise, it worked the first time. <clears throat> to my surprise, it worked the first time. To my surprise, it worked the first time. First time! Oh my god, it's working now. Look. What's next? Multi-attack? That's just an attack, but, but more of it. Alright, so I'm gonna teach the funny little characters the skill. Now, when the player attacks using the multi-attack skill, they should get four prompts instead of two. And, the prompt should overlap with the enemy the player is targeting. Yeah, baby. Wait. Hold the mother flippin' phone for a second, dude. Just hold it for a second, dude. What in the gosh Jiminy frick will happen if both party members are targeting the same dude, but the first party member manages to knock them out before the other party member can attack? I don't know. Let's see. I'm going to change the damage output for the minigame to 1. That way, when we see the damage pop up, we'll know who the player was targeting. I'm also setting up a move called Super Death Destroyer that will kill an enemy in one turn. That answers nothing! The second party member didn't attack at all. It just went right to the attack minigame segment. Hold on a second. What if... What if they both use Super Death Destroyer? Are we saying there's a chance that when we push that button... We get all the bitches. Yes, that is what I am saying. I am become Riz, destroyer of pelvises. We were so preoccupied with if we could, we never stopped to ask if we should... Ugh. So that's the answer, it just defaults to the earliest enemy in the array. That's no problem, I can simply update where the GUI will show up on screen by running a loop to check for the earliest living enemy in the index. Of course, my syntax, my silly little syntax. <laughs> what, what was that? What does that mean? What does that mean that this just happened? And presto changeo! I said, presto, change-o! I didn't mean give me a different fucking error. Unexpected token, where are you? There you are, there you are. Why do you do? What? What's wrong with this curly bracket? Tell me! Tell me, console! Wait, why is this regular bracket underlined in red? The others aren't. Oh. Oh. It was just a regular bracket I was missing. It was a, a regular bracket the whole time. See, it was just a small pro- The only problem was a myriad of other problems. Like and subscribe. Shut up! That's my job. You ever liked and subscribed before? I bet you've never liked and subscribed quite like this. Hoo-ha! <laughs> like and subscribe and you get a life sentence in the slammer. Of fun. The gulag of good times. The panopticon of pleasure. The dungeons of- Damn, that's a good time right there. Don't delay. All comments and personal belongings will be held at the gate. Let's see if this works now. What's going to happen is that we're going to target the same enemy. When the first party member attacks, they will kill the enemy. So the next party member should target the first enemy. Not only that, but the minigame GUI should shift over to the first enemy as well. Got that? Enemy dies, minigame graphics shift to the first enemy. Humana, humana, that's some tasty looking auto targeting. That's it, it's all done. But Kaiden, no, shut up, Kaiden, go away, what if the I'm first, done here, it's done. What if the first I don't enemy know is killed. what you're talking about. What if about? there's an issue with reading the first item in the index? <sighs> Alright, fine. I want to make sure that the loop is working as intended, so I'm going to kill the first enemy to see if the GUI will update to move to the second enemy. Fingers crossed. No rest for the wicked. We gotta move them rows in them hoes. So again, I moved the code from the event into the battle scene, and then updated the placement of the prompts. Let's see how row looks. Gotta admit, pretty tasty. 
But of course, we have to push it to its limits. What happens if both party members target the same row, but one party member kills the entire row before the other party member can go? The trick is to have the game loop from the selected target and keep looping until it finds a living target. If it reaches the count of eight, it will reset to zero and keep searching. When it finds a living enemy, It'll take the row that that enemy is in, and then just target the rest of the row as well. Also, 8 is the maximum number of enemies, that's why it resets at 8. Alright, so here's a skill that will automatically kill an entire row of enemies. Moment of truth. Do you switch? Yup. What about the other row? Yup. Uh-oh, you see that? That can't be there. That enemy's already been brutally murdered. By us. We stood over them as the, as the life left their eyes. What we'll do next is... Oh, that'll have to wait. I have to go to work. Dude, JavaScript just sucks. It's... Buggy and it's slow. Yeah, I know. I've been told. Like, our hardware is stupid fast. Like, stupid fast. It's our software that's inefficient and slow and buggy and making our fans run like crazy and causing crashes and... And don't even get me started on scripting languages. Because they have to run through an interpreter, they're inherently slower than scripting languages. Programming language? Did I say scripting languages, chat? I meant programming languages but they're slower by about 16 times. God, I fucking hate JavaScript. Older software had to run on older hardware, so it stands to reason that it was programmed better. They didn't really have a choice. So if you have a new version of the same piece of software, odds are it ain't that great. RPG Maker is JavaScript is bloatware at this point. Tight, lower Save level more than dynamic languages are just slow and uncompiled language. If it can run on a potato installed with Windows XP, then your game is inefficient and guzzles RAM and you're a bad, evil person. But, but I don't have that level of control over the engine. I, I can't make optimizations on the ground level, but I'm not going to make my own engine, and I'm not going to switch and, and, and learn C or Rust or Lua. I, I don't have time. Hang on a second. Older software. Older RPG makers? They had to run on older hardware. Maybe they're more efficient? And Ruby's not that hard to learn. Oh! Oh. There's the secret. Capped at 20 frames per second. Or, or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's not it. Maybe they were meant to work in an environment where the operating system is... Uh, I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh! Wait! Optimization plugins! Perfect! Give them all to me! Shower me with your golden glory! What? You're incompatible? Just let me comment some things out and... Yes, the performance gains. I've saved an entire stick of RAM from being devoured like it's a stick of butter. But that will never, ever change the fact that JavaScript is slow. Look, if I run a parallel process and open the console, it just starts slowing down to shit. What's happening? What's going on here, exactly? There's something going on under the hood that's going to lead the problems further down the line. So far, I've only played my game in short bursts. What about if someone plays it for hours? How will I fix a project-ending problem if it happens halfway through development? I need to solve this now! What is that? What? What is that? I smell something. I smell something. What is happening? Is this the work of the feature creep? No. This is panic. I found it. It's you. NW.js. It's old. It's icky. Look. Look at the version. Compare that to the most recent version. It's new. It's yummy. Give me. I'll use my old, stinky laptop to test how well the game runs. I can't even run OBS on it. It's so old. Look. Look. The results are the same. How, how could this happen? How could it just be the same? Isn't your game made up of 2D pixel art with a resolution of 320 by 180? And don't most performance costs come from poor programming? Look, I, I read this thing. I am maths and informatics teacher on private university in Poland, and it's rather distinctive that many students I teach are already programmer technicians slash professionals with some market experience.
I heard many times about superiority of C++ from people worried about performance when the lecture was about C-sharp, JavaScript, or Python. Then those same people were completely missing the point on the lecture on algorithms and data structures. I notoriously see invalid solutions to rather simple problems, sometimes just tweaked to pass provided examples, and code that is completely unaware of data structures other than arrays, or maybe aware of linked lists, but using them like arrays. Dude, your C++ code will be slower than my JavaScript code for not small enough data if you don't know what data structure or algorithm when to use. Absolutely, just focus on getting the basic approach decent. I've spent years working with C++ devs like you have, and despite all their worries, most of them produce pretty bad code. There's also a video by Code Aesthetic about premature optimization. Maybe you should give that a watch, too. I... I spent all my time falling down a rabbit hole. I, how do I even wrap this up? Oh, there's the little creature again. How you doing, little buddy? That's cool. Don't you guys think?